Hey there folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be taking a quick look at me, uh, at me, at my uh, Halloween H1 Myers mask. This is using a TOTS Tramer for the base. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a rough base. It's got some issues with it, so I probably won't be selling it now. I think it looks pretty good on the bus from a distance. I'm not in this room too often anyway. I usually hang out in the, um, in the quote unquote studio, but I think sitting here on the mannequin, it looks pretty good. It's not usually angled like this, but... So I'll probably be keeping it for now until I come up with something better. I just don't think it's uh, quite good enough uh, to be selling off for right now. Maybe down the line I'll sell it for a little bit cheaper than what I normally think it would be worth. But I just think that the base mask wasn't very good. As you can see, there's like a lot of dents and there's a lot of bubbling. I mean, these I airbrushed these, so... I don't know where all this comes from. Now I do have a problem with running into hair a lot of the time because of my cat. So hair will land in certain places and I don't necessarily realize it at first. So that is my fault. But things like this, like this kind of texture here, and there's like a lot of air bubbles on these masks recently I've noticed. So there's a few different things I'm just not comfortable with. And then also like scuffing right here. I just don't know what that's from. But yeah, and then you got the glue that Tots has been using. Sometimes it's really strong and sometimes it's not strong enough. I've had a few different insta uh, instances where I'm working on an 18 and I go to rip the hairline off and even being careful with it, the hairline will rip the factory paint right off. So that's not something I really like to happen. So with this, you can see that this could probably be worked on a little bit more, but the actual faux glue line is a lot more subtle than the one that was initially on the mask so yeah those are a few different reasons but as far as the hair the hair has been completely rehaired with crepe blonde hair misted with a little bit of brown but then I went over that with black and I think the hair is becoming one of my strongest attributes for these masks as of late ironically because I'm a painter as you can see so it's a little bit odd to see that my hairing skills are becoming much better than, not much better, but I think they're improving faster than my, than my paintwork is. But I do think that there's a lot of nice things on there, like the V on this and then the lips I think came out really nicely. And there's a few little tricks going on here to get the mask look the way that it does. There's some things going on in the mouth area and then there's some paper on the neck to get that flared out. But as far as to emphasize that castle stretch, I have a few tricks to do that, so that is why that's looking like that. And also I open up the mouth a little bit more than normal to get that castle stretch. Next time I'm not gonna go as deep with it because it looks like on the original mask, the opening in the mouth doesn't span the length of the lips. It's a, It stops a little short. So I'm gonna remember that for next time. But I think this guy's looking pretty good. Like I said, I don't think it's quite good enough to sell just yet. I'm gonna hold on to it for a little bit longer. Uh, but I do have some other masks that are finished and I do really like them. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at those in these next couple videos. But before that, I'm gonna take him off the mannequin and throw him on a stand so we can do a 360 and get a look like that. So without further ado, let's move on. All right guys, so I do apologize in advance for the, the noise in the background. The windows are closed, but the noise of those cars come right in anyway. So I do apologize for that. But this one, this one's not staying where it should be. All right. So we got a little bit of a setup here. Here it is, the H1. And again, like I said before, I do have some trickery going on in the mouth area of this mask. I'm going to go ahead and just explain what it is in this video because there is going to be times where I'm going to do this for masks on purpose when I ship them out. Normally I would like to keep it a little bit of a secret um, for photography and things like that to make the masks look a little different. But in this guy's case, it's a situation where I have to do it if I were to sell this mask. Now that's sort of the thing. I plan on selling this mask, so if I don't actually end up sending this, selling this mask, then this would be a, a situation where I'd be kind of giving away some secrets that I don't want to. But I'm going to go ahead and give this secret away in order to do this with the mouth, the castle stretch, now this is a little bit more intense than it was on the mannequin, 
I do, I use two separate pieces of masks. And the masks that I'm talking about are the surgical masks. Now, during the pandemic, these masks had shanks in them, what I like to call shanks. It's a little metal uh, strip in here. Now, during the pandemic, they were replaced with what looked more like a bread tie. I'm assuming that cut costs for, um, since they're making so many masks during the pandemic. But there is a little piece of metal strip in here, and I use this, and I keep this part as well because it's soft. And I cut it to the shape. I bend it over that way. There's no sharp edges, right? So I bend it over on itself, and then I slide it back into this, and I glue it down in two points. That way it can still bend freely. So now this mask is glued. It has two of these glued at the upper lip and then down at the bottom of the chin to kind of replicate the castle stretch now. So I can go ahead and pinch this to make this more intense if I wanted to. Really intense. So that's what's going on there. Now I shouldn't have done that because I have this all set up the way that I wanted to. And again, I can do that here if I want to as well. Now it'll kind of bounce back a little bit because it doesn't want to be so intense. But there is a level of intensity that kind of just works out nicely. I'm kind of peeking over the camera here, so. All right, there we go. So that's what I do. I use those, and for this guy, there's something wrong with his eye. Um, it doesn't look right to me, so I poked one. Poked. I put one in the bridge of the nose here so I can pinch it, and then that kind of uh, brings this eye in and it fixes it because it's supposed to be kind of curved inward, similar to the original, the original Kirk mask, but the way that it was before, when you spread this out, it didn't have the right shape, and that's something that's very bothersome to me because it makes the mask look bad, let alone inaccurate. So you bring that in here, and it really just kind of helps out bring that sort of curve inward. Now you want to be a little bit careful because I kind of try to bend it just on this side and not this side because you don't want to open up that gap. So there's that. But for this mask, that's my secret. That's what I use. I use these. I want to get it out there before people start getting my masks and then maybe stealing ideas. I don't want to use steel, but I do think it's a pretty unique idea. And it would be a shame if, uh, if I didn't get some of the credit for that. I mean, come on. I want to be a part of this hobby for years to come. It would be nice to kind of, um, to kind of add something to the community that I think is helpful. But here's the back of the mask. You can see we got those skin tones kind of looking a little bit more intense back here. Some of that blonde peeking through just a little bit more. This has been replaced with crepe hair, as I said before. You can see you get a little bit more of the messy look on the side here, which is accurate. Not necessarily the placement perfectly, but the idea of it being a little bit more messy right there is accurate, that triangular shape. These glue lines could be enhanced, and again, you can see kind of the, the issues with the pull. I got these dots everywhere. Now, this mask was dry brushed, or it wasn't dry brushed. It was airbrushed. Excuse the uh, movement there. It was airbrushed, so I don't understand how I could have done this with paint. Now, if I painted this by hand, I can understand how there's chips in the paint. But this was done with an airbrush. It should be as smooth as pie. This is all down to the, uh, I don't know why pie is smooth, but this should all be down to the, the pole, just the rough texture of the pole. This mask wasn't stripped or anything like that. So I don't understand where these little bumps are from. Um, and there's just a whole lot going on here. And sometimes you can't notice these things. Now there's a lot of issues here that I probably should have noticed to begin with. But there's sometimes some things you don't notice until the mask is painted. And I think some people have said that it kind of adds to the H1, making it a little bit grimier, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, this, however, this was a hair that was trapped under there. That's my fault. That's my biggest issue when it comes to these masks that I have to deal with. And that's the fact that my cat likes to roam around during painting time. And he uh, gets hair flying everywhere. So that's something that I've had to work around. And I've gotten a little bit better with it. Uh, the, base, the base coat of this mask was painted a f quite a few months ago. 
it wasn't until I got all my stuff back around and I moved once again where I was able to actually finish the weathering process and hair it. So this base mask, the base coat of this mask is a, is a few months behind where I currently am. So I have made improvements since then, but they are here, they are present, so we should discuss them. Uh, but yeah, and here's another issue that I used to run into a lot. It's not getting the hair all the way up. It looks like there's enough, it looks like it's pulled up enough, but you can see, especially under the ears, that's something that I've had to work around. I've gotten better with that. I've started to get the hair off of the back of the masks completely, so that's not an issue that we run into anymore. It's just some of these minor details and minor, um, these things that kind of build up and you need to pay attention to. Again, the Todd's glue from before not coming up. I used uh, lacquer thinner, uh, nail polish remover, isopropyl alcohol. I even used some mineral spirits on this mask and I do not recommend mineral spirits because it'll start to make the factory paint gummy. So I don't recommend doing that. But same with paint thinner. I wasn't able to get that up and again you can see that little dent down there. So this just wasn't a great pull but I am going to keep the mask because I think it looks good on the mannequin or the bust I should say. I just don't think it's quite where it should be for me to feel comfortable selling it. Um, a lot of what makes this mask have charm is the fact that it's got these kind of, uh, the fact that I can make it do the castle stretch and also the hair. I think that's the best quality to it. I don't think the paintwork is really, um, or the, the base mask is kind of up to par for where I want it to be at this point. But I think it looks pretty cool overall. Here's a little bit of a look to see what the original mask looks like compared to a rehauled Tots mask. This mask wasn't rehaired. It was completely rehaired, but it wasn't rehaired with better hair. It was rehaired. Um, I just used the hair that it came with along with the hair that came with the one from the dream, the dream mask. I just put those together and rehaired it. So it doesn't look as good as it could if it had crepe hair or something like that, but I think that's a pretty good um, Rob Zombie mask for the first try. I'm still working on getting my blood down. It has a gloss finish over it, but it's not super noticeable. So it kind of looks a little strange in some angles. But I think that this guy looks pretty good. Um, if somebody really, really wanted it, if somebody really liked it, then I probably would think about selling it. But as of right now, this isn't the one that's going to be for sale. It's going to be this one and then an 18 that I'm working on and then a few others. Or an 18 that I've finished with and a few others that I'm working on. So yeah. That's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell. All that would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you have the time and you enjoy this content, maybe you should go over to my second channel, Michael's Customs and Comics, and subscribe to that channel. Maybe watch some of those videos. It would be greatly appreciated as well. And uh, I guess without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get the hell out of here. So, of course, until next time, true believers.